皆さん、こんにちは。サンジーです。And welcome back to our channel. So, it's been a while since I last uploaded the video here on YouTube. I think it's been like two or three months since I last uploaded the video here on YouTube. I am very sorry. So, spring is already over here in Japan. It's already summer. And supposed to be, I plan to make a spring series videos here in Japan, like sakura season, flower season here in Japan. But unfortunately, I was not able to do so because of what's happening not only here in Japan but also in other countries because we can't go outside because of this virus. So I was not able to do my spring series videos. But anyway, I promise that I will do my best to make it up next year, next year spring season, and I will try to make spring series videos, maybe next year and also another reason why i was not able to make videos for this past few months is because i am very busy with work and also i moved to a new apartment yes i am on my new apartment right now and guys it's actually my first time to find an apartment just by myself i mean without the help of the company where I am working right now because before yung apartment nito ko yung company where I'm working is the one na nag-ayos ng mga requirements all the processing para makahanap ng apartment but this time I do it by myself and guys honestly it's not easy to find an apartment here in Japan especially if it's your first time and if you are a foreigner so I just realized na maybe there are some of you guys who are also planning to move to a new apartment and you don't know what to do so today I'm going to share with you guys kung paano ba yung mga procedures, step-by-step -step procedure on how you can find an apartment here in Japan. So, if you are planning to find a new apartment or maybe you're just interested on how to find an apartment here in Japan, just keep on watching and let us start! So, okay, so before we start with the procedures on how you can find an apartment here in Japan, I just want to share with you guys some of the terms that they use that are related to apartments here in Japan. So, I have it here in my notebook. Okay. So first, you will encounter the words apato and mansion. So apato and mansion means apartment. So usually, it's almost the same. The only difference is apato, it comes from the word apartment. Ito yung typical na apartment na Usually, the building is like two or three-story building, and compared to mansion, apato is a bit older or furui. The other one is mansion. Mansion comes from the word mansion, but it's totally different from the mansion that we usually know, like the big mansion. Mansion is also an apartment. The difference of mansion with apato is mansion is a bit new or modern compared to apato, and also mansion usually is located in a tall building like 10 story building usually more than three story building so it's more of like a condominium type of apartment so those are the terms that they used apato and mansion so next is how will you know the size of the apartment so here in japan they use the term l d k l d and k so l stands for living room d is for dining room and k is for kitchen so for example this apartment is 1LDK. So the number indicates the number of rooms or bedrooms. So if it's 1LDK, it means that there is one bedroom, one living room, one dining room, and one kitchen. If it's 2LDK, it means that there is two bedrooms, one living room, one dining room, and one kitchen. And then if it says 1K, so if it's 1K, it means that there is one bedroom, no living room, no dining room, and there is one kitchen. So the apartment where I'm living right now is me DK. So it means there are two bedrooms, no living room, there's dining room, and there is a kitchen. So that's the term that they use. Number and then LDK. So usually yung floor plans of apartments here in Japan looks like this. So as you can see, meron kayo makikita dyan ng mga terms. And one of those is this kanji. This kanji is read as Jo. Jo is the term or the counter that they use for tatami mats. So tatami mats is yung para siyang banig or tiles that they use to cover the floors of Japanese houses. So let's say in the floor plan nakalagay doon 6 jo or rokujo, it means that that room is equivalent to 6 tatami mats. So that's how big that room is. If it's 6 jo or rokujo, it means 6 tatami mats could fit on that floor. So by the way, the size of a standard tatami mat is 
910 millimeters by 1820 millimeters. So if it's six tatami mats, so that's how big that room is. So you must remember this kanji, which is jo, which is the counter for tatami mats, and also sometimes they use this, which is actually the kanji for tatami. Okay. So another term that you must know is yoshitsu and washitsu. So yoshitsu yo means western or modern, and shitsu means room. So yoshitsu is western style room. On the other hand, washitsu is the Japanese style room. And you need to know this because it's different. And the major difference is the yoshitsu, the floor niya is made of maybe tiles or wood because it's western. On the other hand, the washitsu naman, the floor is made of tatami mats. So if you want to have that Mendo Japanese style, you must choose yung washitsu na room. But if you don't like that, you must choose yung yoshitsu style na room. And another thing that you must know with washitsu or Japanese style room, since it's made of tatami, medyo mahirap siyang linisin compared sa western style na room. And sometimes yung tatami, pag medyo luma na siya, iba yung amoy niya. And parang nag-aalikabok or naglalagas-lagas yung tatami. So medyo mahirap siyang linisin. So mas convenient yung western style when it comes to cleaning. Ang disadvantage naman with western style is mas malamig yung floor if you don't have a carpet or a like rug. So it depends on you on which one you prefer. Okay, so now let's proceed with the step-by-step -step procedure on how you can find an apartment here in Japan. So first, you need to go or to contact a fudosang. Fudosang means real estate office or agent. So unlike in other countries, like for example in the Philippines, if you want to look for an apartment, you can just like ask your neighbors or friends kung saan merong bakanti na apartment and then you just go there. Or sometimes sa labas ng apartment, may nakalagay doon na apartment for rent and just you just go there, talk to the owner, and then you can rent the apartment. But here in Japan, you cannot go directly to the owner of the apartment. You need to go to a fudosang or a real estate agency or office for you to find an apartment and then the agent or the office is the one who will contact the owner of the apartment that you are interested in. So where can I find a fudosang or how can I find a fudosang? So actually you can go directly to their office but the problem is pag ginawa mo yun, there's a chance na the fudosang or the office is crowded so baka hindi ka nila ma-accommodate. So the best thing is to search it on the internet and to make an appointment. So how? So you just go to your internet browser and then just type Fudosang and then the name of the place where you want to move or to live. So after you type that, different websites will appear and then you just need to check some of those websites and then let's say you will check that website. Once you click that website, there are mga lalabas na list of different apartments that are available on that area. So since madaming apartment or choices yung lalabas, so you can actually filter that based on your preference. So you just need to click yung filter and you just choose your preferred apartment. Like for example, you want 1K, 2LDK, so you just need to check that. And also, you can also put the price range like like for example you want something like 50,000 to 100,000 per month and if you want an apartment that is near the station and also if there's a parking lot you can also check that so you just need to set your preferences and after that yung list ng apartments will be filtered and ang lalabas na lang doon is yung preferred na apartments mo so after that lalabas na yung list ng apartments and then you can check those apartments one by one so pag kinlik mo siya lalabas na yung details about that apartment and you can also view yung floor plan of that apartment para magkaroon ka na idea on how big that apartment is and also yung pictures pictures ng room, pictures ng kitchen, pictures of yung bathroom so there will be pictures that are available on that website and also the monthly rent is also indicated on the website so after that pag nakapili ka na ng apartment that you're interested in you need to set an appointment with the Fudosang so how? So, in the website, nakalagay din dun the details on how you can contact the Fudosang. So, you can do it either by email or through phone call. So, my advice is to do it by a phone call instead of email para direkta nyo siyang kuusap. And if you have questions, you can easily ask them. And also, if the Fudosang have questions about your like personal information or background, madali mo na siyang may explain on the Fudosang. So, after you set an appointment, we now proceed to the next step which is of course, you need to go to the office of the Fudosang. So you need to go there. So once you go there, the first thing that you will be asked to do is you need to fill out some forms. And basically, yung questions to the forms is about your personal information like ano yung work sa Japan, how long have you been working here in Japan, and also details about your previous 
apartment like kung anong type na apartment yung you previously lived and they will ask you again about your preferences in looking for an apartment like you're looking for 1LDK, 2LDK, do you have a pet, do you want something na near the station, near the work mo, do you prefer na sa first floor siya, second floor and after that the agent will interview you, ask you some questions and ask you for some requirements and yung basic requirements na hiningin nila if you're a foreigner is residence card, passport and also you need to have a phone number because your phone number also serve as a proof of identification. That's why you need a phone number. And if you're a foreigner, usually they will also ask for a guarantor. And kadalasan nito nagaka problema yung iba because they don't have a guarantor. If you don't have a relative here in Japan, you can ask the photosang if they can accept like friends or workmates as your guarantor. So if it's possible, then it's okay. So after you fill out the forms and after the interview, the photosang will now present to you some of the apartments that are available based on your preference. So usually the agent will show you like 3 or 4 options, 3 or 4 apartments. So guys, the apartment that you saw on the internet, on the website, the one that you chose, that's why you go to this photo song. You might be wondering why is that apartment not included on the list of the apartments that they are now showing or presenting to you. The reason for that is because you are a foreigner. That is the major problem. Why? Because most of the owners of apartments here in Japan don't accept foreigners because of many reasons. So, if you go to the website, makikita kita mo sobrang daming apartments that are available. But if you go to the Fudosang, sobrang konti lang ng apartments that are available because you are a foreigner and some owners don't accept foreigners. So that's why foreigners are really having a hard time to find an apartment here in Japan. And the reason for that is, first is of course language barrier. So if you can speak Japanese, and the owner can speak your language, like for example English. Kapag nagkaroon ng problem on the apartment or on the other tenants, so may hirapan sila na makapag-communicate sa inyo to solve the problem because you can speak Japanese. So another reason is of course guarantor. So sometimes si mga owners they have trust issues when it comes to foreigners. So that is also a major problem. Another major reason is noise. Since some foreigners, not all, but some foreigners are a bit noisy. Another reason that we consider is garbage disposal. So since we are a foreigner, we are aware with the garbage system or garbage disposal. And also another major reason is the smell of the food. Like we Filipinos, we have some Filipino dishes na yung amoy niya. Now for us Filipinos, it smells good but for Japanese people, it smells a bit bad. So that is also one of the reasons why some owners don't accept foreigners on their apartments. So going back to the Fudosang, so the Fudosang will give you like 3 to 4 options, 3 or 4 units, apartments that you can choose from. So I explain nila sa inyo yung floor plan, yung monthly rent, rules and regulations. So after that, you will now proceed to the next step which is the Kengaku. So Kengaku means kasamahan kayo ng agent on the apartments that they presented, yung 3 to 4 apartments or units that they presented. Kasamahan nila kayo dun on the actual apartment. Para makita nyo yung mismo itsura ng loob ng apartment, gano'ng kalaki, so you will visit each apartment. So by the way, the Fudosang have their own service or car, so you will go there via car. Then after the Kengaku, you will go back to the office. So after you go back to the office, you can finally decide kung anong apartment yung gusto mong i-rent. So if you can't decide yet, pwede ka namang umuwi and then just call the Fudosang like after maybe within a week. But the problem is baka meron ng ibang mag-occupy on that apartment. So as much as possible, it's better if you decide as early as you can. So once nakapag decide na kayo na you want this apartment, they will set another appointment for the contract signing. So they will ask you to come back like maybe after 1 or 2 weeks. So you just need to return to the Fudosang after like 1 or 2 weeks, it depends on the appointment that you chose for the contract signing. So you might ask, is the Fudosang free? Since yung Fudosang yung maghahanap ng apartment, sila yung makipag-usap sa owner, and then sasamahan nila kayo sa apartment para makita yung apartment, babalik kayo, so may service. So is that free? So actually, it's free but it's not free, something like that. It's free in a way na if you decided not to rent or not to get the apartment for some reasons, you don't need to pay the Fudosang like for the service fee or all the troubles that you make. You don't need to pay anything. But, it's not free in a way na if you finally decided na this is an apartment that I want, I want this during the contract signing and during the payment, the initial payment, part of the payment or the expenses is like the Fudosang fee the payment for the Fudosang. So that is the time that they will ask you for the payment. And usually, it will cost like more than the monthly rent of that unit. So that's how expensive it is. But if you decided not to get an apartment from that agent, you don't need to pay anything. Okay. 
So let's now proceed to the next step which is the contract signing. So again, you will go back to the Fudosang for the contract signing. So before you sign the contract, the agent will explain to you all the documents, all the rules and regulations about that apartment or the owner's rules, regulations. Like for example, pag may damage sa bahay, may problema, sino yung kukontakin, ano yung gagawin, yun to, may babayaran ba? Something like that. And also the insurance. Like calamity insurance, fire insurance, and also the payments. Paano magbabayad? What are those things that you need to pay? So once all of those are explained to you and you understand all of those, that's the time that you will sign the contract. After signing of the contract, you need to do the initial payment. So, ito na yung medyo mabigat na part. Why? Because in other countries like in the Philippines, if you want to rent an apartment, you just need to pay like one month advance, one month deposit, something like that, and then you can now rent the apartment. But here in Japan, ang daming babayaran on the initial payment. So, how much is the initial payment? So, I asked some of my friends, some of them are living in a 1K or 1 bedroom, 1 kitchen apartment which cost around 50 to 70,000 yen monthly rent and yung initial payment nila 200 to 250,000 yen yun yung initial payment so that's how big it is in my case I'm living here in a needy K or 2 bedrooms, dining room and a kitchen apartment and the monthly rent is 87,000 per month and the initial payment I have it here the total is 494,100 yen. Yes, almost 500,000 yen yung initial payment. So, I am also shocked kung nalaman ko yung presyo ng initial payment because it's almost like 500,000 yen. So, now I'm going to explain to you the breakdown of the initial payment why it became 500,000 yen. So, first we have Shikikin or security deposit. So, yung security deposit, it depends on the owner of the house how much they will ask for the security deposit. In my case, it costs the same amount no monthly rent, so it's 85,000 yen. In other apartments, it might cost like twice or thrice no monthly deposit, especially if you have pets like dogs or cats, which will be mas mahal yung security deposit. So you might ask, bakit ang mahal nung security deposit? It's because yung security deposit, ang purpose niya, since it's called a deposit, so by the time that you want to leave the apartment, let's say you want to move to a different apartment or you want to go back to your country, nagawin nila before you leave they will check your apartment first for damages. Let's say yung walls, kung may damages ba siya, yung mga pipes, yung ceilings. That's why kung meron kang pets, they expected na baka mas maraming damages yung walls because of scratches. Or if you smoke, maybe yung smell ng smoke is mag-iiwan siya dun sa ceilings and dun sa walls. So kailangan nilang palitan lahat yon yung ceilings and yung walls. So it will cost a lot of money. That's why there is a security deposit. So they will get yung expenses for the damages dun sa security deposit. But yung sasobra dun sa security deposit, they will return it to you. So in my case, the security deposit cost 85,000 yen, the same amount no monthly rent. So next is what they call raking or yung key money. So this one, it's not a deposit. It's like a monetary gift to the owner of the apartment. And it cost also 85,000 yen, the same amount no monthly rent. After that, what is dito is Kinwari Chinryo or daily rent. So, bakit may daily rent? What is that daily rent? It's because usually pag lumipat ka, you will start living there not on the first day of the month. You will start living there maybe on the middle or on the 20th of the month. So, in my case, I started living in this apartment on the 20th of this specific month. That's why in remaining 10 days of that month, I need to pay that and it costs 28,330 yen. So it depends on what date you are going to start living on that apartment. So you also need to pay that remaining days. So in my case, it's 10 days. After that, we have Hinwari Kyo Ekihi or the daily maintenance fee. So there is actually a monthly maintenance fee for the apartment. And since I'm here on the 20th, so they need to compute the daily maintenance fee per day. And it costs 670 yen for the remaining 10 days. So 670 yen. So next is the Chinryo or the actual rent or the monthly rent, 85,000 yen. It's for the next month. And then also, again, you need to pay for the Kyo Ekihi, which is the common service fee or the maintenance fee for that month. And it costs 2,000 yen. That's why your monthly payment, it will cost not 85 but 87,000 yen because meron pang maintenance fee, which is 2,000. So after that, we have this Chintai Hoshoryo or the rental guarantee fee and it costs 50% or half of the monthly rent so it's 43,500 yen and after that there is this Nijiyojikang Sapoto or 24 hours 
support and it costs 16,510. So para sa tong 24 hour support. So if in case may problems, you can call this number or your agency and they will assist you kung paano gagawin on this problem. After that, we have this Chukai Tesurio. So ito na yung bayad ngayon dun sa Fudosa. So it costs a bit more than the actual monthly rent and it is 93,500 yen. So after that, there is this Nyukyo Mae Shodokuryo. So Shodoku means disinfection. So it's like a disinfection fee before you move to the apartment. Of course, before you move to the apartment, ang gawin nila is linisin nila yung buong apartment, they will disinfect the whole apartment and also they will spray like anti like cockroach spray. Since here in Japan, during summer, especially pag luma yung apartment, there are some cockroaches. So, they need to like put some medicine and also disinfect the whole apartment. So, that cost 17,600 yen. And then after that, they have this Kagi Kokan Ryu or Key Exchange Fee. Of course, before you move to that apartment, before, meron ng ibang taong tumirado sa apartment na yun and they have a copy of the keys. So they need to change all of the keys of that apartment and that will cost 16,500 yen. So after that, we have this Kasei Hokenryo or fire insurance and fire insurance cost 20,500 yen. Okay, so that is all. Aside from this, if the apartment has a parking lot and you will rent a space on the parking lot, you will also need to pay for the parking lot fee. So let's say you already signed the contract and you already made the payment, the initial payment. So nasetal mo na lahat. So the next question is, when can you move to the apartment? Usually after you do the payment and settle all the requirements, you will receive the keys of the apartment after one to two weeks. Why? As so what I have said, they need to clean the apartment, do the disinfection, they need to change the keys, all of that. That's why it will take around 1 to 2 weeks. So after 1 to 2 weeks, you will go back again to the Fudosang and receive the keys. And then after that, you can finally move to your new apartment. So you might ask, how about the electricity, the gas, the water, and the internet? So paano siya ipapakabit? Will you do it by yourself? The answer to that is the Fudosang or the agency will help you on the application. So in my case, ang ginawa nila, nagpa-fill up sila ng application forms for the water, electricity, gas, and the internet. So you will fill out the names and some information and also the date kung kailang ka pwedeng tawagan noong company. And yung date na nilagay mo dun, tatawagan ka noong company, gas company, water company, tatawagan ka nila, and then they will ask you, when would you like to start na magamit yung tubig, kuryente, gas? So, basabihin mo lang sa kanila kung anong date yung preferred mo na on this date, gusto ko nang magamit yung tubig, kuryente. And then, they will go to your apartment para ma-on or ma-start na yung mga gas, electricity, everything like that. And, the electricity and the water, even though you are not on the apartment on that day, they can actually turn it on. So, walang problem even if you have work. But yung gas and yung internet, you should be present sa apartment para makabit nila yung gas and the internet because they need to do some explanation and some paperwork. That's why you need to be in the apartment pag kinabit nila yung gas and yung internet. But for the electricity and yung water, kahit wala ka dun sa bahay, it's okay. So once all of those are settled, okay na yung apartment, settled na, the electricity, gas, everything is settled, that's the time that you will move to the apartment. So it's now moving time or what they call the Hikoshi. So paano nga ba maglipat ng bahay here in Japan? So you have different options. One of those is you can hire a Hikoshi Gyosha. So sila yung company nags specialize on moving. So that is the most convenient way but it is expensive. It's pricey. Yung agent ng Hikoshi Gyosha, they will go to your present apartment and they will assess kung ganong karami yung gamit mo and then, kakalculate nila kung ganong karami yung gamit and kung ganong kalayo yung lilipatan mo. And then, they will come up with a price. But usually, medyo mahal talaga yung Hikoshi Gyosha. So, what I can recommend to you is if you have relatives or friends here in Japan na merong sasakyan, you can ask them to help you in the moving or in the Hikoshi para hindi ka na magastusan. But, if there's no car na available, what you can do is what they call here in Japan na rent a car or rent a car. So you can rent a car or a big van for I think 10,000 or 15,000 yen for 24 hours. So you can just ask your friend or someone to drive for you and then do 
and the Hikoshi by yourself and it will save you a lot of money. So if you want to save money, my advice is to rent a car. So okay, so after moving, kung akala nyo, tapos na, there is another step that you need to accomplish which is very important and that is you need to change your address on the municipal hall or the yakusho. Because here in Japan, you can't just like move to a different apartment or move to a different place. You need to register on the municipal hall. You need to go to the yakusho and indicate don na you move to a different address. And if I'm not mistaken, you need to do it within two weeks. It's in their law. So if you're going to transfer to a different apartment but same city or same town, you just need to go to the Yakusho and just fill out some forms and then submit it, then it's okay. But if you are going to move from one city to another city, you need to go first to the previous Yakusho that you are living in and you need to fill out something like a moving out form and then they will provide you something like a moving out certificate. And then after that, you will go to the Yakusho of the new place or town that you are about to live. And then you will fill out the forms and submit the certificate that you received from the Yakusho that you used to live. And at that time, you also need to present your residence card and your My Number card because they need to change your address on your residence card. And once all of those are finished, tapos na lahat ng requirements, you are now officially a resident of that place. And you can now start a new life on your new apartment. That is how it is. Okay, so that is the step-by-step -step procedure on how you can find an apartment here in Japan and how to move to a new apartment here in Japan. So I think sobrang haba ng video na to, but I hope you learned a lot in this video. And if you are planning to move to Japan or you're planning to move to a different apartment, new apartment, new place here in Japan, I hope I was able to help you through these videos and through the information that I was able to share to you. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have comments or suggestions, just feel free to put a comment on the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and also watch my other videos about Japan. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Ja, mata na!